Hi guys, it's Erin from Royal Blue. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over the start of how you, um, you work on a pack, a printable pack. I've decided to start with a top pack because they're a little more simple and um, I didn't know where else to start, frankly. So the first thing you want on every pack is a uh, terms of use page and you want to make sure you cover everything this page. This is your legal protection if someone steals your work. So I, my recommendation is to start every single pack with your terms of use. Put a link to it in your download page, just wherever you think it's appropriate. Put it in there. It's appropriate. So um, now I usually use my last pack as a template to work on my next pack. So you can see here I've got my police top pack opened. We're actually be working on a dragon top pack. It's not really fair to teach you guys using templates though. So I'm actually just going to use this as a guideline for myself because it's been a very long time since I've made these templates. So I'm just going to open a new window. Uh, we are in open office right now. LibreOffice should look very similar. And I use draw or drawing, I guess, in open office. So I'm going to put these right next to each other. And the first thing I'm going to do is copy over this terms of use. Because like I said, that is one of the most important things. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the link to the, um, the clip art artist is correct. And in this case it is. Melon heads to the dragons that I'm going to be using. And then I usually switch out the avatar, but I haven't actually made it yet for this one. So we're just going to change this to say dragons. And then I like my color to match, so I think my main dragon is going to be green. I'm just going to make my text green. I like that green. And then I have it right here as well. So, dragons. Now whenever anyone opens up this file, they will know they've got the dragon top pack. To get a new slide, you can right click and hit new page. Um, my next file is a table of contents. I'll just do that at the end. For these pages, now the font isn't quite right because I haven't downloaded the fonts on this computer yet. But I would normally have a uh, more of a bubble font there. I think this is just standard Arial on there. So the first thing we're going to do, oops, the first thing I want to do is put a border around the page because it makes it look neater. I don't know why, but we stumbled upon this, and by we I mean Cassie and I. Uh, probably a year and a half to two years ago. So I just put a square around the page. I don't want the color in the background, so I'll go up here to where it says color and select none. You could also just do color white. It's just a preference thing. And then I don't want the outline to be gray, I want it to be black. And I like it to be a little thicker, so I put it to 0.02. And that's how I get a border around the page. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually um, get one of the dragons in there. So I have my dragons open in Jimp, but I actually don't have the white dragon that I want, so I'm going to have to find him. I keep all of my stuff in one folder just to keep it neat. Unfortunately, Jimp doesn't give you a little picture, so you kind of have to figure out which one's which. All right, so here we have a white dragon. Now, LibreOffice has a tendency to crash and to lose images, which is really, really annoying because it doesn't just lose one, it loses it throughout the entire file. And yes, I have lost 50 plus images in one run and it's horrible. So to combat this, Cassie has suggested, actually I think it was her husband, to copy the files from GIMP straight into LibreOffice. So I've been trying that and since I've been doing that, I haven't lost any images. So we're gonna copy from there paste over to the uh, to the program and I want him turned so I'm sorry I did that fast uh, I select him I right click go to position and size under the rotation tab I'm going to turn him 90 degrees and there he is and now I'm going to size him down oh I don't want to turn him uh, the green dots mean you're sizing, the red dots mean you're turning. Good to know. To keep it from getting all wonky, you just hold down the shift key. Okay. And it stays the same size. And then we have a dragon in there. 
Now I want to get it to where it says it has the uh, D's for dragon, like in this one. Oh, I see. And so yeah, it's going to say DD is for dragon, and it's going to have the DD there. So my favorite font is um, called ITC Avant Garde, and I will provide a link to that. It's a free font. I'm not sure if I have it on this computer or not. I might have to add that later. So we're going to write D is for dragon. Let's see if I have that font real quick. The tricky thing about this font is sometimes it's under I for ITC and sometimes it's under A for avant-garde. I don't know why. It doesn't look like I have it, so I'm just going to leave this in Arial for now. Fix that later. So I want to make this a little bit bigger. I'm guessing here. I'm going to go with 72. I want it to be centered so that it lines up nicely. And now I want to turn it. And we're going to turn it the same way we turned the dragon. We're going to select it, right click, position and size, and your rotation is already open since we did the dragon. 90 degrees, and there it is. Then you can just click on it and pull it to where you want it to be. And the last thing for this page, we're going to add the DD. This is going to be need, need to be quite large. I'm going to guess 250. Oh, even larger, maybe 400. And then again, we're going to right click, position and size, and 90 degrees. Now, uh, you can go to defont.com and find the bubble fonts. Um, I'll see if I can find a couple that look good and link to them. I use teacher fonts, which um, I believe it costs about $30, but it includes fonts with the lines, the bubble fonts, it includes um, basically anything you'd want to use as a teacher. It, and it's very, very much come in handy for me. I've had it for a couple years now. Um, so then we're going to do one more page, because this is one of my favorite pages. It's the, the dot marker page. So this is um, tedious, to say the least, because each individual dot, you have to place that. That doesn't come naturally. So I've used the Arial font at 400. I'm going to do the same thing over here. First, I'm going to copy the dragon. So we're just going to control C and control, oh, like I told you, sometimes it crashes. Luckily, they're pretty good at um, recovering files, so we'll see what it has. If it doesn't save very much, apparently I'll redo this video. I think this dragon needs a name. And I want to name him Fred. I don't know why. He just, he looks like a Fred to me. So, all right, when OpenOffice crashes, it usually restarts itself like this and it starts the recovery, which does not take very long. And then it opens right back up. So let's see, oh, it did a pretty good job of recovering. We got our whole page back. All right, so where were we? We're gonna do one more. Ooh. Now, see, if I wasn't doing a video, I would just copy this D right here, use that as a template, because that's how you want to do it. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to copy. Apparently, it doesn't like copying. Okay, I wonder if it will let us copy using the mouse instead of my keyboard. Copy. Okay, that's better. And paste. There we go. Now, since we are using the same size, I'm just going to copy this right over too. And paste. And I like to copy over my border because it's kind of just annoying to do it over and over again. And paste. Okay, now. We want the D a little bit lower because it is going to be the main focal point this time instead of the dragon. I'm going to make the dragon a little smaller. 
move them to the side a little. Okay, so I kind of just eyeball the size of the dots. Um, everybody know well, most people know about the size of a dot marker. If you hold down the shift key, you're going to, oh, never mind. If you don't hold the shift key, you're going to get a circle. If you hold the shift key, you can do whatever you want with that circle. Again, we want black lines and no background. And I'm also going to put a persona too. So actually, I'm sorry, you want a background as one. You want to put color white. That way, when it goes over the D, you see the white instead of the edges of the D. Let's hope that copying doesn't crash this again. So copy, copy. Now, if you hold the shift key down, it will only let your dot go side to side, which is nice for those straight lines. I usually just kind of do this real quick and then space them out more evenly when I'm done because it's hard to gauge how many you're going to fit at the beginning. Oops. Well, this doesn't seem to be working. There. So I'm going to try to move these closer and see if I can get one more in. Now, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me place all these. I'm hoping that this video editor has a fast forward feature. Otherwise, I'll just I skip it ahead. I'm not that techno technologically advanced with this stuff, just learning, but everybody's got to start somewhere. So there's our second D. And that's how you make a quick letter dot marker page with our wonderful little Fred Dragon over here. Now, the last thing I want to show real quick is how to insert your own uh, link on there because you want to have your link on every single page or at least a copyright. So you're going to go to the master right here. Basically, this slide, whatever you put on it, will be on every single page. So all I do is go down here and add royalblue.com. I usually add it in my favorite font, which I don't have. And I like to add the copyright symbol because it just makes people stop and think a little bit. Like, is this really copywritten? Do I want that legal battle? I put it right down in the corner. And now it's on my pages. Ta-da! And that is how I do the first two pages of my top pack.